Hey guys, thanks for stopping by for the latest video here at Hayward Tech Support. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to do the low voltage wiring uh, on a Hayward HDF 400 heater. We're gonna show you the wiring inside the heater, the wiring, um, how, you, how to do the wiring inside the Omni PL or Omni Logic. And uh, we're gonna show you how to program a new heater in the system as well. So also if you have an older boxy style, a Hayward H400 FDP or H400 FDN, I'm gonna describe how to do that as well. It works very similar. So. Uh, first things first, I'm going to show you the tools needed for this job. We're going to need a 5 16 inch nut driver. Um, we're going to need a flathead low like technical screwdriver. We need a pair of wire strippers. And then we're going to need a roll of um, 18 to 22 gauge by 2 wire. Um, in this case, if you're on a new installation, you have an extra temperature sensor, then you can just cut, cut the ends off the temperature sensor and strip the wire. So. That being said, let me show you where to find, uh, where to start with the installation. So if you're facing the heater, you've got the compartment on the right side, which is the high voltage uh, connections, and the connection on the left is where the low voltage package is with the connector. So you open that up, pull it off, and you've got a packet, looks just like this, and then inside the packet is the, is the uh, communication cable for the heater. Um, also in there, you'll see they've got their, uh, there's this connector right here. This comes with like a blanked out connector. It looks just like this one. So you'll have to punch that out and put this new connector in there as well. And that's in the bag. The next thing we're going to do is take the top off the heater. So there's four screws that secure the heater to the, uh, or the top to the heater itself. Screw here and here, and then two screws on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and just remove them. Take the top off. So now the screws are off, I'm going to take the top off and set it kind of to the side. You can see there's a, there's a ribbon cable right there, so you want to be careful not to pull on that, but there is a metal guard here so that it, that's not supposed to be able to happen, but just be a little bit careful with taking the top off itself. And then you can see where we plug in the cable. It's this switch in the, in the, in the very top of the heater. So this connector right here is where we're gonna plug the low voltage communication cable into. It says SEL switch on it. It also says pool spa vac. Um, so it just plugs in that, you can see these pieces kind of go downwards and it should just seat, seat well. Um, keep in mind, if you have an older style version of this heater, um, they just recently redesigned it to make that easy to get to. It used to be kind of tucked away and the board is oriented differently, so it was just harder to get to, so um, keep that in mind. And then when you're kind of routing your cable through, it's good to use these clips just for like cable management. So if you can kind of tuck it in that clip, tuck this in that clip. All right, I got the cable through all the clips. I'm gonna poke it through this hole you can see, and then the wire is gonna pop out the other side. Pull the little extra slack you got. And then so what we're gonna do is take our cable, 18 to 22 gauge, route it through this connector there, and then you'll see on the uh, connector from the, from the Hayward to HDF 400, you, it's got d instructions for a two wire remote or a three wire remote. Um, so we're not using a three wire remote. So what we're going to do is cap the red one. So it, uh, inside that little baggie, there's these little small little wire nuts. So we're going to just kind of twist that together, bend it, and then twist the wire nut on there. And then for each of these, I like to give them kind of a pre, little pre-twist there. And then it doesn't matter what color goes to what, because it's just an open or closed connection. So I'm gonna twist that together. Use a wire nut. Just make sure the wire nut grabs. And twist these two together as well. And you're gonna tuck those guys up in there and put the cover back on. Okay, so I've got my cable uh, uh, routed up through the low voltage raceway, and you can see this connector here has got LV1 and LV2. So we can connect these wires into either one, LV1 or LV2, and the easiest way to do it is to just grab the connector, remove from the board. I'm gonna slide my two wires into the top two, that's gonna be LV1, and then I kinda hold it in place with one hand, and then twist them, do, tighten them like that. Just make sure when you tighten them down, you get them firm. So they don't pull out easily. 
and you're going to put that plug right back where it went. And again, you could do either the top two or the bottom two. LV1 is the top two, LV2 is the bottom two. You just have to remember which port you plug them into for programming. So let's show you programming. So now we're at the display of the Omni PL and we're going to program this new heater into the system. So you're at kind of the home screen now. There's a faint arrow on the right side. You're going to have to tap that once, maybe twice, depending on your setup, and hit the config button. And once you hit config, um, you're going to go into the config wizard. So if you hit config wizard, it's going to ask you for an MSP ID number. So in order to get that number, you're going to tap system info. I'm not going to show you because I don't want to reveal this unit's MSP ID. But you tap system info and at the very top of the screen, it shows the MSP number. Um, so we're going to tap config wizard and I've already entered the MSP ID in this one. So it lets me bypass. You're going to edit the existing, tap the right arrow. And then you're going to go to bodies of water, pool, and then you're going to go heating, cooling. You're going to add heater. Heater cooldown enabled. We know we don't need to enable heater cooldown. Heater extend enabled, no. And then if you want to set your temperature range, the default max temperature for a pool is 90. You can change that all the way up to 104 if you want. But um, I'm going to leave that at 90. And if you want to change it, you just tap that, enter a new number. 95 check mark right arrow and then what type of heater gas right arrow name heater if you want to change it you can tap the bubble and rename it whatever you want but I'm just gonna leave it as gas check mark right arrow what relay is it wired to so we were re wired this one to LVR1 um, so you can select it between LVR1 LVR2 or any of the high voltage relays but we wired it to LVR1 and remember, high voltage is wired directly to the breaker. LVR1, that's correct. Right arrow. Does gas have a valve? No. And then a minimum operation speed of the filter pump. We, I usually bump this up at least to like 80%. Um, the reason for this, if, if it's running at a lower speed and the fil filter starts to get gunked up, it'll, the heater will throw an LO code. So I usually do the minimum operation speed at least, you know, higher rather than lower. So then... We're going to hit the uh, air home icon in the bottom right, and that will take us back to the home, the home screen of the config wizard. Tap the floppy disk icon in the bottom right. Check mark to proceed. Do you have an air temp sensor? Yes. Which you will have previously done this, but I'm going to do it. It's making me do it here. Check mark. Do you have a water temp sensor? Yes. Pool temp. Right arrow. And I don't need a flow switch, so I'm going to say good, home icon, floppy disk icon. Are you sure you'd like to save the changes? Check mark. And then it's going to save and restart. So open up the display there. We've got our light lit up next to the power icon. If you push the mode button, you can cycle through spa, pool, and then that's just the power icon. So with the light lit up next to the power icon, hold the mode button and the minus symbol both at the same time for about five seconds until the heater flashes BO. So there we've got BO. You're going to push the mode button one more time to put it in either pool or spa mode and now it's ready to be controlled by an Omni or by any automation system. All right, last thing I wanted to touch on, um, if you do have the older style Hayward heater, it's a little bit smaller, more boxy. It's the H400 FDN or FDP. Um, to access the circuit board and to get to the low voltage connections, there's like a big door in the front. So all the access is on the front. There's a single screw, uh, Philip said. So you remove the screw to remove the door and then you kind of got to get on your hands and knees, but the circuit board is like, uh, like right here inside the heater and it's the same connector and everything inside there. So it, it connects the same way. It's just at a different location and it'll be pretty obvious. If you get the door off, you'll see the circuit board and then the little three pin connector is right there. So that is it guys for today's video. We really appreciate you stopping by. If you learned anything, if you got some value, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe, like the video, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. So um, thanks guys again and we'll see you on the next one.